Welcome to the demo video of our Monthly Budget Plus spreadsheet. Our Monthly Budget Plus spreadsheet contains a total of seven tabs. You'll find a Start tab where we will start and set up your spreadsheet, a Log tab where you enter all your transactions, a Budget tab where you can create your budget and keep track of your planned versus actual expenses, a Calendar where all your bills and debt payments will be added, a Debt Snowball dashboard, a Savings dashboard, and lastly, a bonus worksheet. Now, let's start with setting up your spreadsheet. Before you do anything else, you should head over to the Start tab to make your changes, because as you make changes here, the whole spreadsheet will update. If you want to change your currency, you can do that here by simply double-clicking on the field, hitting the backspace button on the keyboard, and typing in a currency sign or abbreviation of your own. When you change it here, as now you will see, it will update everywhere else in the spreadsheet. This is also where you will be able to add your subcategories. In total, you can add 15 income subcategories, 25 savings subcategories, 24 bill subcategories, and 25 expenses and debt subcategories. To add a subcategory, all you have to do is double click on the field, hit the backspace button and type in a subcategory of your own. For example, paychecks. You can do this for every single spot that you see here. In addition, for the bills and the debt section, you can also add a due date that the bill or debt payment is due. So for example, if you pay for rent and it's due on the first, you just add a one here. Make sure to only enter a number between one and 31 because it will automatically be translated into a date for you. So it will always show on the calendar no matter what month you select it. Now, let's enter some subcategories so you can have a better idea of what it will look like. To delete any subcategories you don't need, just simply click on the field, hold shift, click on the bottom field and hit the backspace button on your keyboard. This will delete all other subcategories. Now that we've added our subcategories, you'll be able to see that the, everything has been changed on your budget spreadsheet. They've also been updated on your drop down menus in your log tab. Now that we've set these up, we're going to go and scroll down to set up our savings dashboard and our debt dashboard. Now all you have to add is a goal. So for example, for our holidays, we want to save $2,500 and maybe we've already set $500 aside. Now, if you plan on saving a set amount every single month, you can enter a monthly amount here too. So it will show you exactly how many more months it will take you to reach that amount. So let's say, for example, if we save $100 for this every month, now that we go over to the savings dashboard, we can see that we've had a goal $2,500, we've saved $500, so there's $2,000 left to save, and with $100 every month, it will take us 20 more months to reach that goal. You can do this for every single sinking fund or savings fund that you've set. So let's just fill this in. If you don't have a start amount, you can of course also just enter zero. If you have a start amount, you can just enter that in. You can also leave the monthly amount empty. It will just not show you the amount of months it will take. Now, if we go over to our savings dashboard, we can see that all our information has been entered. We can also see our total goal and how much there's left to save on the top. And now when we start adding transactions for savings to our log tab, the totals will show here for each savings or sinking funds. This way you'll be able to see exactly how much you've saved for each and how much there's still left to save. Now let's head back to the start tab. Now that we set up our savings and sinking fund dashboard, let's head over to the debt snowball. To set up your debt snowball, all you have to do is enter your start date, your monthly extra, and the information per debt. You don't have to enter your information in any specific order, just in whatever way you've entered it, and the spreadsheet will automatically sort them from the smallest amount to largest amount. So let's say, for example, you want to start off paying off debts in December 1st, because that's the month that we're currently in, and you want to pay $500 extra towards all your debts every single month. This extra amount is on top of the minimum payments that you'll have. So for, let's say, for example, you owe 750, 1500, uh, 800, 2500 and $500 on these cards. Now you add your minimum monthly payment, let's say they're $50 for each, and they have a variety of interest rates. Now that we've entered all this information in our debt snowball section, when we head over to the debt dashboard tab, you'll be able to see that all information has been pre-entered. But we will get back to the debt dashboard a little bit later to explain it in more detail. 
Now the last thing you can add on your start tab is all your monthly subscriptions. We have added this section so you can leave a little bit more space in your bill section. So for example, if you have Netflix and Amazon Prime, and let's say you also have Spotify, you can just enter the amounts here. And basically this total amount will show at the bottom of your budget in the plan section. This way you can keep a little bit more space, but you still have all your subscriptions added to your plan section. So you know exactly how much you still have left the budget. Now that we've set up our start tab, let's have a better look at our budget tab. Our budget tab is probably the reason that you ended up buying this spreadsheet. Our budget tab is designed in a way that you can duplicate it as many times as needed so you can create a new budget for a new month and basically create as many budgets as you need. Now to set up a budget, all you need to do is select a month, select a year and select on what day of the month you would like your budget to start. So for example, if you get paid on the 5th and you would like to start as of your payday, you can change that here by simply replacing the one for a five. Now that you've set your month, the next thing that we would recommend doing is add your planned amounts. So this is basically your budget. So for example, if you enter how much income you'll receive for that month, you'll be able to see a total here of what you have left for your plan section to distribute between your savings, bills, expenses, and debts. Now let's add that information. Now, before we actually start logging expenses in our log tab, we do want to inform you about the rollover section. We included the rollover section, so basically you can include any money that's left over from previous months. This basically only works for the actual section and basically gives you a better idea of how much you actually have left to spend. Or you can use this budget as a rollover budget by simply selecting this checkbox. When you select this checkbox, the actual amount will update based on whatever money is left from the previous months. Now, if you just start budgeting, there will be no money from previous months in your budget. So what we recommend doing is heading over to your log tab and now add an income from last month, basically as your start balance. So let's say, for example, you're starting budgeting in December, but you still have $500 left in your account from last month. Just add it as income because it needs to be a positive amount and then select any subcategory. As you're not budgeting for that month, it will not show up in your budget. So for example, just select paychecks and enter behind it here, start balance. Now, when we go back to our budget tab, you will see that the rollover amount from last month was $500. If we deselect this, it will not take this money into account. So basically this allows you to select if either you wanna take any money left over from last month or last paycheck into account or not. The plan section does not update, so you will have to manually enter a mountain here if you already, for example, in November you set $750 extra aside to be used for next month, you can add that amount here and you'll be able to see that now you have $750 more left to distribute. Now that we've turned our rollover function on, let's head over to the log tab and have a little bit of a better look to see how this works. So it's the month of December, so let's add some transactions. So let's say, for example, you received your paycheck, and let's say, for example, you received a bonus. Now that you've added these income transactions, when we go to our budget tab, you can see that they've been filled in in your actual section here. Basically, your actuals will take the information from the log tab and total them for you so you don't have to do any calculations. You'll also be able to see that your left to spend section has been updated as well as the graph on the top. Now let's add a couple more transactions to have a better look at what your budget will do. So now that we've added more transactions for our savings, expenses, and bill categories, when we head over to our budgets, we'll be able to see the totals for each amount. Now that you've added these transactions, you'll also be able to see that your left to spend section has been updated. So basically all your savings, bills, expenses, and debt amounts have been deducted from your income and whatever rollover amount you've had left. You will now also be able to see that your plan versus actual has slowly started updating. You'll be able to find a breakdown to see exactly where your money went. You'll also be able to find a breakdown of your expenses here. Basically, you can just add transactions as you go and all the totals here will update automatically for you. And that is basically how the budget tab works. Now, when the month is done and you're completely done budgeting, what you can do is start a new budget for a new month. You can either reuse the same tab by just switching the year, switching the month, and just typing over the planned amounts, or you can duplicate this tab. This way you can keep a record of the last month, or if you'd like, you can already like start planning ahead. To duplicate a tab, all you need to do is simply click on this little arrow and click duplicate. 
everything will still remain exactly the same. So now what you can do is just switch the month. So let's say, for example, you now want to budget for January 2023. You'll see that as soon as you switch the dates, it won't show any of the actuals anymore that you've entered in your log tab. It will only show the actuals for the month you have selected. So now you can delete any of the plant's information. You can, you can enter new amounts or if your budget stays the same every single month, this way you don't have to refill the information anymore. Now you'll also be able to see that your rollover amount is $3,380. Basically, if you have a look at the budget from last month, you see this is exactly how much there was left to spend and money that you did not use. So this is the amount that now rolled over into your next month's budget. And basically, that is everything you need to know about the budget tabs. Uh, it might be good to know that you can also rename the tab. So for example, if you want to rename it January so you can separate the budget tabs easily, then you can do that here too. We do recommend keeping the original budget tab as a template because this contains all the formulas. It contains all the graphs. This way, that if you accidentally delete a formula in any of the newly created budget tabs, you will know that you always have the original that you can duplicate again and reuse that contains all the formulas that work. So now that you've had a better look at how our budget tab works and how the log tab works, let's have a better look at the calendar tab. The calendar tab was included so you can easily see when your bill payments and your debt payments are due. All you have to do is enter the month and the year. So for example, it's now December 2022 and the calendar will update automatically for you. We've also added the option to either start on a Sunday or a Monday. That way you can make a calendar that works for you. Now, if you'll have a look at your calendar, you'll see that all your bills and debt payments have already been pre-entered into the calendar for you. You'll also be able to find them in this overview section on the left here, separated by the debts and separated by bills. We've included some checkboxes so you can easily mark off when a bill has been paid. Now, it might be good to know that when you switch months, so let's say for example in December, you have paid all your bills. If you now switch to January 2023, your calendar updates, but your bill section and your debt section do not update. So the checkboxes stay as paid. You'll have to manually deselect these by clicking on the top, then clicking on the bottom one while holding shift and then basically hitting the spacebar button. This will deselect them all at once. Another option is to create a duplicate of this tab. You do this exact same way as we did for the budget tab. Just click on the little arrow and click duplicate. This way you can create a new calendar for every single month and after the month is done, you can just basically delete it if you no longer need it. Now, it might be easiest to just use this as a template and then create duplicates as you go so that again, just like the budget, you will know that the original calendar will always work. You also see that your due dates have been pre-entered here based on the information that you've entered in your start tab here. Now, it might be good to know that these due dates are open so you can change them. So for example, if you pay rent every four weeks instead of every month and next month you want to pay it on the fourth, you can enter a four here and it will update on the calendar. Do know that when you enter four here, you override the formula that's been entered and it will no longer show the original date that you've entered on the start tab. Now we know that some people pay bills bi-weekly, maybe even weekly, or would like to add any annual bills to the calendar. And for that reason, we've added an extra bill section here at the bottom. You can just enter any extra bill that you like. You just basically add the name. So let's say for, uh, you wanna add an annual bill and it is just due on the fifth. Now, when you go on the top, you'll be able to see that your annual bill has been added. This is also great for those that pay bills bi-weekly and have any bills that don't show up on the calendar because it matches the exact day. This way you can add the second bill or even the third bill over here and it will show up on your calendar. And that is the calendar tab. That is basically everything you need to know about the calendar tab. Let's have a look at our debt tab. As we've already entered all our information into the start tab, you'll see that all your debts have been preloaded here for you and you'll be able to see a breakdown of each payment each balance for each month and when every debt will be paid off. As you can see, they've already been sorted in order for you from smallest to largest, as with the debt snowball method, you pay off your debts from smallest to largest. Now, you have a little overview on the left-hand side here where basically all you have to do is select a month and you'll be able to see exactly what your payment for each credit card or debt will be. So, for example, it is currently December 2022. When we select this month and this year, you'll be able to see that you need to pay $500 for your credit card number five, $100 towards credit card number one, and $50 towards each of the other credit cards. When we add a payment towards the debt in the log tabs, 
So let's say, for example, on the 1st of December, we put $150 towards credit card number five. Now, when we head over to our debt tab, you'll be able to see that you've paid $150 towards this debt and that there's still $350 left to pay for this month. We have done this so that basically if you prefer to make weekly or bi-weekly payments, you'll be able to see exactly how much there's left to pay without having to write it down on like a little piece of paper or anything like that. You will also be able to see the balance at the end of the month you've selected. So after you've made your payment of $350 left still, you'll be able to see that your debt will fully be paid off. Now another function that we have included is that this debt snowball lets you pay more towards any debt at any time. So let's say, for example, you make your full payment of $500, but you still have some money extra this month and you want to pay a little bit more towards that credit card number one too. Now, let's say you have scheduled $100 for this month and you'll be able to see that here in this overview as well. Now, if you go over to your log tab and let's say you add a payment of $200 towards credit card number one. Now, when we go over to this section here, you can see that you've paid $100 more. So there's minus $100 left to pay and that your balance is now $550. The original $100 has been replaced by the $200 and you'll be able to see that the rest of the payments have been recalculated for you. Now, the last option that we have included is to plan ahead in your debt snowball. So let's say, for example, you know that in March 2023, you're going to receive a bonus of an extra $500 that you want to put towards your debts. Now, all you have to do is just add the $500 here. You'll be able to see that your plant is now updated $1,250 and the rest of your calculations have been updated as well. So now you pay more towards credit card number two in this month and you pay more towards credit card number four for that month. You'll also be able to see that all the other calculations have been recalculated for you as well. This also works the other way around. So for example, if your monthly extra is $500 and in March you need an extra $500 and you don't want to put anything extra, so let's say you want to not pay any of the monthly extra that month, then you just add minus $500 here. You'll now see you'll just make the minimum payments for that month, which is $250. You'll see that the rest of the calculations have been updated as well. And that's basically how the debt snowball tab works. The last step that we have not had a look at yet was our bonus tab. This tab is basically included so you can help analyze your expenses and your bills to see where your money goes and where you could possibly save more. It takes all your bills and expenses logged in your log tab from all the months. And then all you have to do is select the priority for each of these sections. So let's say, for example, rent is very important, but your gym membership or let's say food and drinks of eating outside is not important. Now, when you add this information here, you'll be able to see exactly where your money goes and possibly where you could save more in the future. And that is it. That is everything you need to know about our monthly Budget Plus spreadsheet. If you have any other questions, do not hesitate to send us a message. I'll leave some contact information in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.